Hello, my name is Kevin Young from Moonlight Mantids, and today I just wanted to pick up where we left off, and I think we did a little short on the distance between um, the worm string and the uh, hatching ooth from the uh, Hyrdula Majuscula, which is the giant rainforest mantis, and we had a little bit of a problem, and I just wanted to address it, and uh, today, I, I just you just missed it, I did kind of an unboxing, um, but I got an ooth in the mail. I got an ooth... Um, it's a, of a relatively um, common species I actually haven't ever worked with before. Um, they're called uh, Siphondromantis uh, lineola, whatever. Uh, it's the African line mantis. It's a giant African species like a lot of others, but for whatever reason, I just haven't ever come across any until now. And this, uh, I got uh, this one ginormous, massive ooth in the mail today from uh, Kevin, I think it's V. It just says V-I-V, -I, I don't know. Uh, he's from Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you, Kevin, for sending me the youth and giving me a pretty good deal on it, on a species that I'm pretty excited to work with. But I have to say, and I think this is perfect timing, um, because th I gotta say, this is the biggest, biggest ooth I've ever seen in my entire life. I've seen some kind of like long and thin ones from some of the flowery species, but this ooth is massive. And I thought, oh great, I can tackle this issue because I'm guessing a 32 ounce cup is not going to be enough. I'm thinking because of the sheer volume of the number of nymphs that are going to come out. Um, like you have this ooth here that we just talked about. It was in a 32 ounce cup and the worm strings were so long they actually kind of hatched off the ground and that can be really, really dangerous. And um, I thought, well, um, next time I do a Hyrdula Majuscula ooth, I'm going to have to put it in something bigger. And I always, uh, I, I tell everybody to put them in 32 ounce cup, that's fine. Not in all cases. And um, you can easily, easily put something together where they have more space. Um, not only for volume or if for whatever reason they have a particularly long, like, worm string, um, worm thread or whatever. They come off a little string and then they hatch out of it and become L1s when they hatch out of their ooth. Um, uh, also for volume, if there's a lot of them, this uh, this here Duma Jusculo, by the way, uh, this ooth hatched out um, 219 um, uh, nymphs. And what I do when they start hatching is I keep I take them all out of there and I put them, I separate all of them. Some people like to put um put their nymphs in uh, containers of 10 or 12 until they shed once or twice. I don't like doing that because you get a bunch of them that rip each other apart. They they're, you know, not all of them are getting food, not all of them are getting the, a little bit of water, and they, you know, commonly accidentally grab each other, and you get a bunch of them with missing limbs, and it's just not the way to do it if you're, you know, if, if it's just you, sure, if, you know, um, if I were you, I would keep 10 or 20 if it was just for you, and I would cull the rest, like put them in the freezer and just kill them off, um, but putting them in massive numbers, you're just going to get a whole bunch of handicapped nymphs. Then you got to try to baby them and try to get them, their limbs to grow back, which I'll do a video about. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, this one made about uh, 219 that came out of this. And something to remember is I'll take them all out of there. I'll put the, the ooth back into the container. I'll miss the container again. And I'll slightly mist the ooth itself just a little bit. Help moisten it up again because once it started hatching, it lost a, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, moisture. So uh, I put a little bit back and I close it. And for the for the next few days, up until uh, up until this week, it's been hatching slowly. I got a couple scouts. I think probably three the first day. The second day, I got ten, and then bam, the next morning, I think it gave me about two hundred. And since then, it's been giving me one or two more up until a week ago. I mean, so for about two weeks, a couple babies, a couple laggers, a couple that were early, and then the major hatch, of course. Um, I kept getting more. So if you kind of miss the youth and you want every single one of them, if you're really excited about a species, you want to give yourself the best chances. 219 is a lot. I probably could have done with just 190, but I took an extra step and just missed the youth a little bit, little bit directly, just very, very nicely with some atomized water and um, just put it back in the container and waited a few days and then you'll end up seeing more and more coming out, just, you know, ones that are late. And uh, they seem to all be doing fine. Actually haven't had a die off at all, which says a lot about the breeder because they obviously um, aren't inbreeding too much. You know, um, I think that's what that says about or, uh, the person that bred these. Um, anyway, so I got today from Kevin uh, a giant um, African line mantis ooth, and this thing is huge. And I think we're going to have to set it up, and I already set it up for you, um, just like I probably should have set this one up. Not that it had too many, because 200 is pretty all right for a 32-ounce cup, as long as you don't leave them in there. Um, when they do hatch, you want to give them about 12 hours to dry. You don't have to feed or water them for 12 hours. 
Then you want to put them in a big, big, um, a bigger cage, like a screen cage, uh, cloth or fiber cage, um, for separating. Otherwise, they're just going to go everywhere. And uh, maybe I'll make a video and show you a little bit about how I separate my nymphs. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you the setup for the African uh, line mantis ooth real quick. Hold on. Let me unzip this. Okay. You see here? Okay. So right there is the African line mantis ooth. It is huge. I mean, look at my hand and look at this ooth. It's just massive. Here is uh, another large uh, ooth species right here. Um, species mantis that, that makes large ooth, I mean, sorry. And look at the size. Just right there and then just side view. Just massive. Biggest ooth I've ever seen. Never worked with the species before. I've worked with a lot from its genus. And I'm sure it's going to be pretty easy. But uh, this is not going in a 32 ounce cup. Because I have a feeling this is going to give me about probably twice the amount of nymphs. I mean it's just it's just massive. So what I set up here is I... Because um, you don't want to transfer the ooth from the surface that you um, light. Like a low temperature while hot glue uh, gun is what you use to, to attach the ooth. I... Uh, I, uh, I don't want to, you know, pull it off of there with like a razor blade or something and heat it up again. Every time you do that, I think you're damaging it a little and you don't want to risk burning the uh, nymphs or the eggs inside. And uh, so I just cut around, uh, cut around the lid that it came in, uh, came on, and I just glued it to this nice um, lid that I made myself uh, for adult mantids in this massive, massive plastic jar that I have dozens of that uh, sit around here. Oh, here's the box the youth came in. And, um... Uh, what I do is I put some of this uh, nice, um, I don't know what it's called, it's like this plastic grating you can get from like Hobby Lobby. And I put it in the inside of this, I didn't glue it on there, it's just sitting in there, it's loose. And uh, I uh, put it in the inside of this jar, of course I filled the, the bottom there with um, some moss. And uh, so they're going to come in, they're just huge, huge ooth. I'm just going to screw this lid on, I'm going to make sure I keep this relatively moist. That way when they come out of here, they're going to hatch from the top, they're going to hang down. And they'll just drop off, or they'll just crawl back up the string and on the youth and hang out around the lid here, which is fine. But I'm giving them lots and lots of space because I'm expecting a high, high volume, a lot of individuals to hatch from here. And uh, just keeping it moist. The, the moss is great uh, instead of like paper towel because they don't seem to stick to it as well. It's more of a sponge, so it absorbs water. Um, so I've been using a lot of sphagnum moss. Um, you don't want too many of the droplets like this on the side, though, if you can kind of knock them down, um, but uh, for, I just moisten this so it's, it's kind of wet right now. But um, keep this moist, let them hatch, and I'll, I should make a video when they do hatch and show you how it went. I'm expecting a lot to come out of here. Um, and uh, this is what, and uh, you know, for larger species, high volume, uh, or uh, like these guys who happen to, to hatch down some uh, a, a little ways off of the, uh, the actual ooth itself, it's better to keep them in something like this, which um, I have an ooth care video. And 99% of the time it's fine. You get these larger species here, or just for whatever reason, this one. And uh, you want to give it some space. And then, of course, uh, something to climb on. Make sure they don't get too wet. And uh, we'll show you another video of this one. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here, let me put this back. All right. Can you see me? Yes, no, whatever. I, just, I don't care. Um, so that was it. I just want to show you those few things. A few little small tips. This is going to be somewhat of a shorter video, I hope probably in like 20 minutes like or 30 minutes like the others but um anyway um please visit my website www.moonlightmantids.com if you guys want to order any of these species like i said uh some of these been hatching and they're for you guys so they're for you guys to order um and uh i hope uh, i hope you enjoy and hope that helps a little bit if you guys get into breeding anyway uh stay tuned for more videos uh, please subscribe bye